This is a facelifted BMW 1 Series F21. It's got new LED headlights, new apparently new front bumper, refreshed grille, new lights in the back, improved interior and you can have it with lots of multimedia and driver aids. And now thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Wait a minute. Open the door and there are some M badges around the cockpit. And there is no model sign on the tailgate, so either it's a sleeper or a diesel. Neither. Although you can probably tell by the single exhaust, it is hardly a sports car. This could be one sexy looking Beamer, but it's a 118, which means a 1500cc three banger under the hood. Yes, it's the same 136 horsepower engine you get in the current Mini Cooper and a more potent version propels BMW i8. But if you're a bit of a traditionalist, BMW has a 3 liter straight 6 M140i for you. But as far as I remember from the Mini Cooper, three cylinders aren't bad. Sure, 8.7 seconds from 0 to 100 km per hour doesn't give you bragging rights unless you're talking to the owner of a 118D, which is tenth of a second slower. Interestingly enough, Mini Cooper is a second faster. But Mini can't do this. Soak it in guys, because the next BMW 1 Series may be a front-wheel drive. But let's be honest, you're not buying the second least powerful 1 Series to hoon it around parking lots. You're looking for a nice all-rounder and this is exactly what BMW 118i is. It's compact, it's got good damping, the engine is relatively flexible. This is what you want from a car. But we also want efficient cars and the 1.5 liter engine is hardly economical. Forget about 6.4 liters per 100 kilometers in the urban cycle because you're looking at more like 10 in moderate traffic. 4.6 extra urban? In real life it's more like 7 or 8 depending on the load and traffic. That said, on my 300 km round trip, I did drive on some dual carriageways and motorways. And speaking of motorways, BMW 118 easily reaches top legal speeds in most of Europe. Should you go on an unrestricted German autobahn, it will eventually reach the top speed of 210 km, but the three-cylinder engine is out of its comfort zone above 170 km per hour. At least that's what a little bird told me. And this is what the three-cylinder engine sounds like under hard acceleration. The suspension is set up for dynamic but not aggressive driving. It is on the firm side but damping is good. The only problem are the run-flat tires, especially 18-inch ones. On potholes they work against the suspension and forget about driving fast through tight hairpins because 118 may let the front side slide and there's not enough power to correct it with oversteer. Play nice and safe. Steering is electrically assisted and unfortunately it's not a Porsche rack. I think only Porsche got the hang of electric power steering or maybe customers of other brands simply don't want too much steering feel. I don't know. Or maybe BMW has to leave something for its more track-oriented models like the M2, which by the way is no Porsche. Brakes are adequate for this car's power. Remember you're driving a budget by BMW standards three-banger hatchback and don't expect the car to stop dead in its tracks, especially with heavy load. Seats are comfortable, in this example they're adjusted manually, but charging 400 euro for lumbar support adjustment is robbery in broad daylight. Just like many other options in this car, by the way, this test example costs over 40 grand, a similarly equipped Golf 1.4 TSI DSG 150 horsepower will cost about 30% less. My neighbors can look down at me, but at least I've got 12 grand in my pocket.
Compact cars are popular because they are practical. 360 liter boot with regular shape can swallow more luggage than you think. Space under the boot floor is occupied by the battery. There is also some space left but I wouldn't keep anything of value here as this compartment gets quite warm. There is a couple of shopping bag hooks in the boot, a 12 volt socket, anchors for an elastic net and even a system to mount an optional cargo barrier. Back seats split 40-20-40 so you can carry longer items like skis, folded seats create a flat loading space. Spec sheet for this car states that this is a three-person bench. Believe it or not. I wouldn't like to spend too much time here because of the huge tunnel. Unless, of course, there would be two ladies here that couldn't control their hands. Unfortunately, my budget doesn't allow it, so I shall move behind the driver's seat, which driver's seat is set to my driving position that's 175 centimeters in the front, 175 centimeters and God knows how many kilograms in the back. And I still have some legroom and some headroom. Okay, so it's not the most spacious back seat, but it's good enough. The problem is not seating comfort in the back it's getting in and out. If you have motion sickness, better ask the driver for a front seat. Speaking of which, even getting in and out of the front of the car can be a bit hard. The car is low, the sill is high. Give it a few tries and ask yourself whether it's going to be as much fun in a couple of weeks. The dashboard is typical BMW with classic round dials, nothing changed here, but there are new features on the multimedia system. You can now have concierge services like on higher models, but you'll need connected drive services for that. So get ready to spend around two grand. Everything here is solid, there are no suspicious sounds. There is a cubby here behind the cup holders. Under the armrest uh, we have a smartphone cradle, you can also order a wireless charging point. There is a USB port and a 3.5mm jack socket. The glove box is rather small. Now there are nice big door bins here, unfortunately. They're made of rather hard plastic, so don't bother putting stuff like keys in there, they'll just rattle. Prices of BMW 1 Series start at €23,000 for a 3-door that's actually marginally cheaper than a Highline Golf. Audi A3 and Mercedes-Benz A-Class also start around this price point. I like the 1 Series, but to feel the sheer driving pleasure BMW is talking about, I'd have to spend at least fifty grand on a 125i. Meanwhile, I can have a lot of fun for just half the price in a Mini Cooper. And what do you like? One Series, A-Class, A3, Mini or perhaps a Golf is your cup of tea? Let me know in the comments below, share, rate and subscribe and why not drop me a couple of whatever your currency is via PayPal or Patreon. Links below. Your money helps me make better videos, buy new gear, go places. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.